Hello, my name is Maya, and I'll be presenting on the causes and effects of period poverty for students globally and within my school. Uh, to introduce myself, I'm an incoming senior at Longmeadow High School in Massachusetts. I'm heavily involved in music. I play the flute and piano and am a section leader at my school's wind ensemble. I'm also involved in sports like tennis and basketball. Um, I'm this year's captain, and I'm also hoping to coach youth basketball this winter. Uh, to expand visibility and opportunities to females and non-binary individuals, I'm heading the Women's STEM Club, which provides them professional guest speakers and hands-on STEM-oriented activities such as 3D printing or crystal labs. I'm also heading the school's chapter of the Girls Who Code Club, which is a international nonprofit organization which provides opportunities to girls and non-binary individuals pursuing computer science. I've also been a Girl Scout for 12 years and am committed as a team board member to the Rachel's Table nonprofit, um, which is an organization based in Western Mass, which helps provide um, meals to food insecure families and educate others on food insecurity. I'm currently re um, really interested in research. This summer I helped conduct research as an intern at Pioneer Valley's Life Science Institute in Springfield on the effects of cytokines and inflammation on breast cells. Uh, I'm hoping to pursue a major in bioinformatics, public health, or its adjacent fields. I'm really just interested in promoting health equity on a regional scale through either in-depth research or policy making, both of which I would like to pursue by first gaining a proper hands-on lab or clinical background in. So around half the population menstruates, um, many of which face period poverty. Many think of it as an access to period products, however, it's much more basically just anything that leads to mismanagement with your menstrual cycle. Uh, the National Institute of Health has described it as having insufficient access to menstrual products, education, and sanitation facilities. 16.9 um, million menstruating women in the United States live in poverty, two-thirds of which are low-income and food insecure women who cannot afford basic menstrual products. Uh, globally, 500 million people lack access to basic menstrual products and hygienic bathroom facilities for use during the menstrual cycles. Uh, as for the effects of period poverty worldwide, there are many, but some of the primary ones are listed here. Um, lack of access often leads to anxiety and depression, or simply just shame from the stigma. Um, since individuals can't talk about it, this makes their periods harder to deal with, leading to increased periods of isolation and stress, especially in teens. Uh, those who face financial burden often have to choose between meals, other necessities, and period products, which are already made more expensive by taxes since they are considered a luxury. Um, many face decreased physical health due to improvisation with other unsafe materials, especially in foreign countries where they use um, unsafe water or already used products. Uh, Gaza, for example, has 540,000 women currently using cloth and sponges rather than menstrual products such as pads and tampons. Uh, this increases chances of infection, reproductive issues, or sometimes even death. Menstrual issues such as risk of staining, especially when they don't have access to products, leads to many not attending school or jobs at all. In India, for example, 40% of girls have reported being absent from school because of their period. And in the U.S., according to USA Today, this statistic is one-fifth. Uh, many believe that these high rates of absenteeism contribute to this cycle especially for victims of period poverty in developing regions where there is less access to sanitation services and products. Um, so lack of access leads to school absenteeism, as we talked about, since it is much easier to remain at home with the difficulties of dealing with stains and stigma in a non-social or non-interactive environment. Uh, because periods are a monthly occurrence that lasts for around a week, it becomes difficult to want to keep attending and leading to missed class and assignments leads to poor grades and less investment in school. Um, a lower display of academic ability leads to lower level jobs that make it more difficult to support themselves or their families, um, leading to this lower status of women. Uh, so these are some statistics on basic sanitation worldwide. Um, SDG regions are essentially sustainable development goal regions from the United Nations. Um, it was a way to split countries or just the world into regions for statistic analysis. Um, based on these stats, there's a slight upward trend overall globally, which is good. Um, however, there's very unequal distribution. Europe and North America had good estimates for basic sanitation services. However, um, Sub-Saharan Africa and Oceania do not, and by nearly half the amount. It appears that all of Asia has rapidly increased. However, Latin America and Caribbean regions are trending downwards while Oceania has stagnated. 
As for my own work, I wanted to more closely observe how period poverty affects students, especially those from a developed region, um, and what that can kind of look like for them on a daily basis. I anonymously surveyed my own high school, which is primarily middle to upper class students and whose bathrooms do not provide menstrual products freely to its students. I received 170 responses from all students who menstruate, which included biological females, non-binary identifying students, and transgender students. Uh, I first wanted to look at how mental health and stress levels are affected from inaccessibility. Uh, an overwhelming 74% reported stress due to inaccessibility for any reason. Uh, this is surprisingly high considering our school's nurse's office, although far from the academic wing, does provide some menstrual products. So this shows that location is also a big factor in period poverty for students, whether due to distance from classrooms or visibility of the products. Um, it also shows that accessibility might be improved if these products were instead in bathrooms. Uh, one responder said that a primary factor for their stress was limited passing time, so it seems that stress in school is also due to insufficient bathroom time and that there is a lack of empathy for menstruation as a reason to miss class. Uh, next, I wanted to observe whether affording menstrual products caused students financial burden. Uh, it was up to students what financial burden looked like to them individually, however, a surprising 20.6% reported that it did. Uh, this survey was for students alone. Um, and as teenagers, they are typically primi and primarily supported by their parents. This has even heavier implications for menstruating individuals who are self-reliant or have families to support. Uh, next, I wanted to look at whether menstruating students thought that period products should be free. Uh, an overwhelming 98.8% reported yes. Um, so we can generalize that for students who menstruate at my school. Nearly all of them believe that schools should be funding products for their access. Uh, the fact that no bill goes passed for Massachusetts schools and that 98.8% of these students answered yes shows that there is a large discrepancy in opinion between menstruating individuals who are affected and those who are not, which is expected but also unfortunate. Um, as for takeaways for this presentation, I have a couple things that I'd like to impart. Uh, the first is that period poverty can look different and be caused by a lot of different things. Uh, for students at my school, even provided period products not being in bathrooms made them as a solution a lot less effective, considering around 70% still reported stress due to inaccessibility. Another is that menstrual product accessibility is a common problem and not limited to developing countries. Uh, social stigma alone in stable environments can stifle education and promote absenteeism. Uh, the last is that understanding and openness is key. Um, so many of these issues are caused by social stigma alone, so I just implore that after watching this presentation, as a teacher, peer, co-worker, or family member, that you see what kind of struggle menstruation can cause and just help lighten the stigma that causes it in the first place. Uh, these are the references I used. Um, as for acknowledgements, I would like to acknowledge and thank the PAD Project nonprofit who has generously offered a grant to my school with the statistics provided in this presentation. Um, I would also like to acknowledge my school principal for allowing the distribution of the survey to my peers. Uh, lastly, I am very grateful to the Johns Hopkins Global Health Leaders Conference program, its staff, administration, and fellow attendees for allowing me the opportunity to present and meet other well-informed, passionate individuals. Um, thank you for listening to this presentation, and I just hope that this has helped expand your perspective on the struggles of menstruation or the public health field in general. Uh, if you have any questions or would like to contact me, feel free to email me at this address. So thank you for watching.